so um, here's two automobile first aid emergency kits. Uh, one purchased in America and one purchased in Germany. Um, in, in Germany and other places in Europe, it's required to have one of these in your car. So they're very standardized over, the, over there. In America, you can customize them, and this one's a little customized. But this is uh, more of a all all around survival kit in case you're driving and and um, you know your car slides off the road into some ice or snow or into a ditch and and if you it's it, it's happened I mean some people have been stuck in their car for two or three days so or trapped or something like that so it's it's good to have some kind of a of an emergency kit in your car at all times. The other reasons, obviously, if you get hurt, if you're changing a tire, something as simple as cutting your finger or or getting a sunburn or being bitten by an insect or something, you know, those are all things that can happen. Or if um, you're driving and, and you come across an accident scene and you need to render first aid to somebody, it's a good idea to, um, to have a kit like this. So I thought we would start with the German one. Now I purchased this in Germany, um, a, 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 around Trier, Germany, in in a uh, I'm trying to remember where did I find this? It was like a general store, and I, I uh, just wanted to have one to bring home as a souvenir, but also just to go ahead and put in my car because it's, it never hurts to have. It's better to be over prepared than unprepared if you need to have any supplies like this so um, it's in German and it but it also has English instructions in fact the instructions are in all kinds of different languages and this because first aid kits are such a, a big deal in Germany they even have an expiration date on it so it, in November 2021 you need to buy a new one so yours is up to date I'm not sure if they check for that or not uh, they might though if it's expired because there's probably things in here that are perishable. It also comes with a book you can see. Um, and uh, it's in a nice nylon case. And uh, this is the book. And um, it's in. German, English, French, uh, Spanish, Arabic, um, Russian, and um, is that Polar? Uh, Russian, and I'm not sure what that Polish maybe. I'm not sure. I apologize. Someone can correct. Someone can add it in the comments on the end. But um, there's all your instructions in different languages, which is good in case um, you're hurt and someone is helping you. And they grab this and they need to re refer to something like how to do CPR or to burn, apply a band-aid, basic instructions in here, mental care too, um, to, you know, dealing with trauma in terms of that, not like therapy, but, but you know, Dealing with someone who's in shock. How to apply bandages. How to uh, put someone in a, a position if they're injured. And then here's some some uh, full charts. So and it has the contents of the bag in here. So this kit is really just kind of down and dirty, just first aid. It's got a number of bandages, and this is a what we call in America a space blanket, but it's 
basically uh, to keep someone warm if they're losing body heat rapidly this will this is a quick way to warm them up um, big triangular bandages I mean these are almost like battle dressings not quite as big as battle dressings here we have uh, these angled scissors designed to cut sleeves or pants legs or whatever to access a wound so you can provide treatment so you can cut like that without poking somebody that's, what, that's the reason for the shape tape here's your gloves to put on in case you're dealing with your you know, blood and stuff you don't have gloves on and then lots and lots of rules of hands. you can never have too much of this stuff this is the kind that sticks, you know, you wrap it around and it sticks to itself. It's really good to quickly, swiftly apply bandaging. So you got a lot of good stuff in here. If you're in a situation where you need to render first aid, or if you been, or you or your loved one is injured, you'll have a lot of what you need. On this side. Got a, a set of different band-aids, all kinds of different ones, in a, in a resealable bag. So, you know, just depending on, and it tells you um, two fingertip bandages, two finger bandages, uh, two plaster strips, um, four adhesive bandages. And these are for small, small injuries. Like, you're changing a tire and you pinch some skin or something, you know, you, you, it, these aren't for, like, major injuries. This, though, uh, this is for a burn. This is a burn dressing. It's very soft and cottony. There's two of them. And then, uh, here are your, uh, cleaning wipes, your alcohol prep wipes, to sterilize the, the area. Here. Some big old bandages, wound compresses. wounds or burns and then I soft nylon package so it fits right under your seat as well as this one. And this one is uh, the Eco Safety. Very sturdy recycled material. Handle. Nice zipper. Nice metal zipper. Lanyards. watertight case inside the case 
SM matches. They're waterproof matches. And I think that might be a striker strip. No, there's one in here. There's a striker strip in here to strike the matches on. Very handy to have um, for heat, for light, to sterilize instruments. Uh, number of re another number of purposes for matches. And you have uh, a slightly different pair of scissors than in the German kit. Not quite as well made, but still, you know, it's good to have scissors. These are for splints, for like if you break your finger. You know, you would wrap that around. Tweezers. Pull out splinters. What, whatever, all kinds of purposes. This is uh, antibiotic ointment. So if you have a wound, you clean the wound first and then put this on to um, reduce the chances of infection. A few, piece, a few packs of that. Um, here we have uh, two kinds of painkillers. Um, if your patient or yourself is in pain, you have aspirin or non-aspirin, acetaminophen. Uh, you can administer this to help someone get more comfortable, ease pain. It can help with headaches, sunburn, blisters. It, you know, it, it, it's better than nothing. It's not like medical. It's not like hospital grade painkiller, but it might make them comfortable enough until emergency services arrive. Here is um, a few packs of burn cream um, with aloe vera, mostly to soothe the pain of a burn, whether it's sunburn or um, a burn sustained while working on an engine or in a fire or something like that. Here's uh, alcohol prep pads. Excellent way to clean yourself and the person that's injuries before you apply bandages or ointments. Uh, several of these. Insect sting relief. Say the injury, it, say you're changing a tire and you get stung by a wasp or a bee. Put this on and then it's a little towel and it'll reduce the pain. Most of these things are temporary fixes, you know. Now it opens out, kind of butterflies out now. Here in this pocket, several of these uh, quick, cl quick clean antiseptic hand wipes to, for a number of reasons, whether to clean your hands before you treat yourself or somebody else. But hygiene is very important. Um, if you're dealing with wounds or to kill the germs and everything. It's it's very, very important to keep infection from spreading. Here is the American First Aid Guide. And in this case, it uh, is more like a poster. And it's in two languages. It's in Spanish and in English. And it has just common things. Bleeding, external, internal, burns, Thermal burns or chemical burns. Chemical burns can happen if you're working on an engine or if there was an accident involving some truck hauling chemicals or something like that. Um, say you, you know, you're, uh, it, you know, you're in your vehicle, but you witness a drowning. You know, uh, electric shock that happens a lot when people try to work on their cars. A car battery is very dangerous thing. Uh, one common cause of injuries is people buy jumper cables and they don't know how to use them. Um, and it's, it's funny to me, this is something they should teach in schools, in my opinion, is how to use jumper cables, how to properly use them. But the short 
lesson here is you you have your jumper cables and you have a, the, the little clamps are two colors red and black and on your car battery you have uh, two holes on your battery a positive and a negative and so that's on two car batteries when you're trying to jump so what you need to always do is put the red on the positive the black on the negative and you always start on the car that has the power the car that's not dead then you hook them up to the dead battery the same way pos red on positive black on negative and then you start the engine so you do it in those steps because if you do it wrong you can best case scenario you can short out your car and worst case scenario you can electrocute yourself so um, it is very important to understand how all of these things work before you attempt to use them because there's many ways you can hurt yourself um, fainting fractures frostbite frostbite's another thing see winter time is now i live in the balmy tropical south where we don't have harsh winters but if i'm on the road um there's some places where the snow is really deep you can get stuck or in the snow and no one may even come across you the snow could pile up over and hide the signs that there was ever an accident so frostbite is a concern so is hypothermia and it's good to have matches it's good to um be conscious of the symptoms of hypothermia and frostbite you can lose fingers from things like that um gas poison carbon monoxide comes with cars always note if you smell a car exhaust in your cabin while you're driving there's a problem you shouldn't be smelling it you should always take that car to a garage and tell the people who work there that you smell exhaust in your cabin in your car you shouldn't be smelling it and because the carbon monoxide is a very very lethal heat exhaustion say you're at the beach you're in the sun you're not drinking enough water you're maybe drinking alcohol or caffeine it and you can easily get dehydrated before you know it and you can get heat exhaustion it can turn into heat stroke it can cause permanent damage you have to be careful about it. The shock can be caused physically or, or mentally depending if you witness something really horrifying it can throw you out of whack if you get jostled really bad you can be in a state where you simply put you're kind of in a psychosis you're unresponsive uh, you need it, typically you can look at someone's eyes their pupils may be different sizes those are all signs of shock um, or, or trauma stings can be a big deal especially if you're allergic sunstroke I was just talking about these are all things you, to be aware of and that's why you should always have, you know, minimal equipment in your car. Your car is an extension of your house. So if you're out and about, and if you don't have some basic supplies, you know, you can be in some trouble. So it's always good to carry stuff like this. Then you got instructions on how to do CPR. Uh, and, and I think this is pressure points to stop bleeding. Um... So these are all, and then there's also a spot for you to uh, write your information down, the numbers and so forth. There's an extra one. Ugh, maybe, this is a customizable one, so if you want to add more customizations, they have ads to buy, you know, like a nosebleed kit. You know, just to stop nosebleeds. It's just up to you if you want to have that much stuff. In this pocket, we have uh, a lot of uh, basic injury preparations, gauze pads, big ones, and an extra absorbent one. Um, it's uh, for, you know, uh, you find the pressure point, try to get the bleeding to stop, clean the wound, put some kind of uh, antibiotic preparation on it and slap this on and then affix it with you know gauze or tape or both you can easily use these as a tongue depressor or as a splint most likely these are going to be for splints mostly to keep a 
to keep things from moving. Cotton swabs, uh, to, not to clean your ears, but to apply things without having to use your fingertips, you know, to apply ointment or whatever, without having to risk contamination with germs and so forth. Another extra pair of plastic tweezers that lock really tightly. Safety pins have serve a number of purposes. Uh, they're most importantly to uh, clamp things together. I mean, whether it's a, a, a big dressing for a wound or to keep something up or, I mean, they're very, very useful tools. Some tape, good sticky tape, and some smaller gauze pads. Okay, so we covered that. Here's uh, the space blanket in the American kit. Um, like you said, sometimes certain conditions can cause people to lose body heat, whether it's cold weather or loss of blood. Uh, it's good to have one of these to keep people warm. This is a compass. Um, what I always recommend doing, because, see... Our, we use our cell phones a lot to get around. We use Google Maps. We use Siri. You know, I do it too. When I was much younger, because you know, I, you know, I was uh, I started school in the seventies. So I mean, I've when I first got out on my own, there were no such things. So we had to use road maps. So if you're driving around, and if you're on a long road trip, you say you're going through several states. Take a moment when you enter in every state. Note that there's always a welcome sensor before you go into every state, stop in that welcome center and find they almost always have a complimentary road map for the state and grab one. Just take it with you, stick it in your glove compartment and leave it in there. If anything happens, if you get lost, if you are in some kind of jam, a map and a compass can get you out of it. So, um, this is a very important survival tool to have. I mean, this is a very nice uh, uh, camping grade compass, but even a Cracker Jack compass to, to let you know which way is north so you can orient yourself if you have yourself a map. If you have a general idea of where you're at, you open the map up, you find what direction is north, you look at your map, and then you try to get context clues from where you're at to figure out where you're going. It's very simple small tool that can get you out of a lot of trouble. Um, here is a cold compress pack. Uh, it's the kind that you bust, you, you squeeze it, and it gets cold. It's very, very good to have one of these. Okay, um, here's all your bandages. Lots of bandages. Butterfly closures are, um, if you can't get stitches, they're a real good way to uh, close a wound. Small wound, I mean, obviously not a massive wound, but uh, if you have, like, an open wound, this is a very quick, temporary fix. That's what the purpose of them are. Um, small bandages for very minor cuts. I mean, mostly to keep blood from getting somewhere, you know, facial cuts finger cuts, things like that, but these are always handy to have. Uh, finger bandages, basically for a cut on your finger. That doesn't, you know, just to keep to keep it clean, you clean it with an alcohol prep, stick one of these on, a whole bunch of adhesive strips, lots of bandages. It's always good to have these. And as you can see, there's lots of extra pockets on here. 
for customization. So you can think about the things that you want to add to your kit to make it for say you live somewhere you know in a cold climate you want to have more stuff like toll warmers or, or what have you if you live in a hot climate you might want to have um, more things like sun heat burn creams or things to treat um, you know sunburn and so forth maybe some more Tylenol maybe some aspirins another thing you could have if you say you're up in the mountains Idaho Colorado whatever um, some people recommend having iodine so if you are out of water and you can't get to your convenience store to buy water if you find a brook or a stream it's always a good idea before you drink the water to drop some iodine in it or there's also water for your purification tablets that's something you might consider putting in your kit um, you know so some people might want a small vial of iodine um, some people might want if you have for example if you have a prescription medication that you have to take what I would recommend is getting a small container um, a sturdy watertight container that would have two or three days worth that you could fit your pills into and put it in here so say you were in a jam and you were out somewhere where you weren't in contact with people or stores or telephones you have your necessary medication so I would definitely you utilize this space for that um, other things some extra flashlight batteries or maybe even um, a small flashlight I mean things like that are, are a good idea to have I think this kit yeah I, underneath the, the cold mat yeah this kit has a uh, rubber glove and it also has a finger light that you can there's a little velcro strap and you stick it on your finger and then you can uh, if you need to put bandages or whatever on you've got that little light there so it's always a good idea but it's a small light I would want to pack a slightly bigger light maybe a Pack of double A batteries might not be a bad idea. Um, you could you can get a bigger flashlight, sturdy one. One of these guys where the battery lasts forever. Um, a pock a pocket knife is a good idea to put in here. A small pocket knife to cut things I mean you got scissors but um, another thing you could think about putting is a, a rain poncho a rain poncho so if you're gonna be um, changing a tire or whatever in the rain and you don't want to have soaking wet clothes open this kit up and have a rain poncho in there see and look small thing you put under your seat between the two of these I've got tools and supplies to deal with all kinds of problems on the road so uh, another thing that I always recommend bringing on a trip is just a cup a um, if you're out and if you can't get to uh, there's a lot of reasons to have a cup a cup with a lid not just coffee and water but uh, to bring water to pour things into if you know there's a lot of reasons you want to have a cup handy with a lid a, a lid that closes tightly because uh, it's just something I recommend another thing like this cup has inside of it is a pin having a pin is a really good idea 
you need to get directions. If you uh, if you're out somewhere and you meet somebody and they tell you where to go, you want to have something to write with. Um, I mean, there's just if you only got a couple minutes of battery in your phone and you need to jot down some directions, you got your pen. It's a good idea to have this. And these are all just things to think about. I mean, you can go on and on and on with things you want to have in your car on a trip. But these, I think, are basic, smart, common sense things to have with you that aren't overdoing it, but that are just for minimal safe driving across the United States. There are places where you're going to be in between hotels and, and so forth so it's a good idea to have yourself some supplies so um, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, please rate comment subscribe bye